doing cataract surgery in our home-based hospitals in our own countries is easy. We, we are in our own comfort zone of our own OR, our patients that we are familiar with. When we move away from our home ORs and go overseas, particularly when we're doing cataract outreach camps, things are very different. Now, I've done cataract outreach surgical programs in many countries, having operated in different countries in Asia, in Nepal, and those cataracts are mature and uh, not easy to do. But I have to say that when we did cataract surgery in the Indian tribes of the Amazon forests in Brazil, the levels of difficulty we encountered were something else. We encountered IFIS signs in practically every patient that we operated on. But it's interesting that when we see such severe IFIS, the signs that were described look a lot worse in this particular group of patients. Intraoperative floppy iris syndrome, or IFIS, was first described by David Chang in 2005. The main features are a triad of signs. Billowing of the iris, prolapse of the iris through the incisions, and progressive meiosis. Since 2008, Brazilian ophthalmologists have been volunteering in expedition to operate on isolated Indian tribes with cataract. They live in remote areas of Amazon forest, and we have observed that IFAS occurs in a more aggressive manner and at a greater frequency than it is generally recognized. In this clip, we can see that the iris billowing is more vigorous. We can also observe that there is a persistent iris prolapse around incisions creating problems for the surgeon. Finally, we also see that the pupil constricts severely the problems created by IFAS during surgery are generally managed by the use of iris retractor, cohesive OVDs and intracameral apri sugarcane. With these well-established techniques, we were able to obtain good surgical outcomes. We soon had an impression that not only was IFAS more intense, but then it was also encountered more commonly than usual to the extent that we would expect every patient we operated on to have IFAS. In 2012, we therefore conducted a retrospective surgical review on the incidence of IFAS, as defined above in a tribe called the Satyra Moe. In this particular cataract camp, over 90% of 126 surgeries showed an incidence of IFAS. Surgery in the many other tribes yielded similar rates of IFAS. The incidence of IFAS in the literature is approximately 2 to 3 percent. Patients using tonsulosin may have an IFAS incidence of 16 percent. The Amazon Indians have an incidence well in excess of 80 percent. It is not known as of today why serious IFAS is so common among the indigenous Indians of Brazil. We suspect that it is related to a diet in which they consume herbs, roots and infusions which may contain alpha receptor blocking agents. More studies are needed to identify them. Performing surgery in remote eye camps may give rise to new and unexpected observations and difficulties. These challenges can be overcome by the dedicated team of workers who have supported our work in these communities, the Forest Doctors of Brazil. At the eye camp in Amazon, I had a chance to operate local Indians. Their pupil didn't dilate enough and became smaller and smaller during the surgery. The iris was so floppy and quite easily prolapsed through the incision. And surprisingly, it happened in the local Indians in Amazon, not only in men, but also the female patient who never had any alpha-1 blockers. In this clip, we can see the first cardinal signs of IFAS, which is the billowing of the iris, especially when you feel fluid in the eye. The second sign observed here 
is extensive iris prolapse in and out the incision. The third one, finally, we can observe the progressive constriction of the pupil. In this patient, the pupil is small even before the surgery started. Despite the use of atropine, midriocil, phenylephrine, it was necessary to use malignant ring to perform the CCC and phaco. We can see in the clip that the iris is billowing vigorously. We can also observe iris prolapse and progressive meiosis. In this other patient also with the small pupil at the beginning, iris retractors were used to enlarge the pupil. We can see that the iris is progressive meiosis. We believe in severe IFIS, failure of pupil dilatation in response to midriatic agents may represent another feature of serious IFIS. Even at the end of the surgery, iris is still prolapsing. Serious IFAS will not let the surgeon go in peace. Thanks for watching.